Hi everyone. If you were blessed enough to know your grandparents or your great grandparents, you know that they may have had some habits and ways of running their household that is a little bit different than what many of us practice today. And with the resurgence and the interest that there is in people wanting to live a more traditional lifestyle, I think it's good for us to have a look at some of those habits and see how we can implement them in our lives today. So let's get started. having a stocked pantry. Many vintage housewives knew the value of having a pantry stocked with basics like rice, flour, pasta, sugar, oats, canned fish, canned tomatoes, and the like, because there wasn't 10 different grocery chains within five miles of where they lived for the most part, and a lot of people didn't even have a car, and going grocery shopping was an outing. So it was wise for them to have their pantry stocked with enough goods to last a while and of course for us today having a stocked pantry not only helps insulate us against things like income fluctuations but it also allows us to get the best price on things because it allows us to wait for a sale instead of buying something in the moment when you need it create an inviting home make your home a place where you and your family want to be and i'm not talking about having fancy furnishings and everything picture perfect with decorator pillows but your home can be cozy and comfortable years ago i had a friend who lived in an old apartment building and the furniture that she had were hand-me-downs and the carpet needed replacing but she thrifted a quilt from the thrift store and she put it over her old couch and she would wash it every month or so and it looked absolutely beautiful and then she also found some second-hand rugs and she put them down over the carpet and she always had her apartment scrubbed clean and everything was tidy and she displayed all of her little collections so sweetly and there was always you know a pot of coffee on the stove ready to go and a scented candle or two and it was such a pleasure to spend time in her space because she just spent so much time loving it up and it reflected her and it reflected her personality and her warmth came through in that space and that's something that we can create in our homes as well. A little bit of tidying up, maybe some decluttering and some fresh flowers and you've got a wonderful cozy home which can go a long way to changing the mood in your space. Also budgeting and saving for purchases. Our grandparents had great financial wisdom as well and many people in times past tried to avoid debt as much as possible. To them, pulling out a credit card to buy a pair of shoes or a handbag would have seemed absolutely crazy to them. And if they really wanted something, they saved for it. Which meant if they didn't have the cash for it, it meant that they couldn't afford it. And more than that, purchases were planned and carefully thought out and mostly based on things that were needed. And I think about what a contrast this is to today where we can go to Walmart or Target three days a week and purchase things on a whim and how many things end up in the cart unintentionally that we didn't plan for. But this isn't how things used to work in times past. Housewives used to sit down at their kitchen table once or twice a month and go over the needs of the household and it might be a new pair of pajamas for your youngest child or it might be a replacement lamp for one that couldn't be repaired but all of these things would be carefully worked into the budget to make sure that there was room enough to buy them but this is certainly a routine that we can get into today and it's a wonderful thing to adopt. Our grandparents also understood that rainy days would come and no matter how little they had, they always found ways to put away resources for future use. Whether it was saving scraps of lumber for a future project so they wouldn't have to buy it again, or if it was canning food that they grew from their garden so that they would have vegetables in the winter time. 
and they also put money in their savings account, building them up little by little. And this is something that is a great habit for us to adopt today. Creating your own emergency fund is so valuable because don't be discouraged by how little you can save because whatever you can put away will keep you in better shape when you actually have an emergency and you're better able to deal with it. Letter writing is also an old-fashioned skill, and it used to be a staple of communication. Letters kept us connected and recorded our thoughts and our history, and often were worth saving. Getting a text or an email isn't quite the same. How many texts or emails do you get that are immediately deleted? A letter, though, is special because it's personal and it takes time and thought to create. And they live on the refrigerator or get placed in a special box to be enjoyed again and again, often outliving us. A wonderful custom to bring back. The next thing is hospitality. Generations past put a big emphasis on hospitality. And I don't want the word to intimidate you because it doesn't mean that great hospitality only happens in perfectly decorated homes serving five course meals. It's just about being friendly and gracious having people in your home. And it doesn't have to be complicated. Call up a friend and serve up some tea and cookies and spend the afternoon catching up or serve up a sandwich and some lemonade. It's a great way to strengthen your bonds and build your relationships. And of course, knowing how to cook from scratch is extremely important. And I like using the odd convenience item every now and again, just like everyone else, but cooking from scratch doesn't really take that much more time and you get so many more benefits health-wise and cost-wise as well. And to show you what I mean by that, I picked up some rhubarb the other day because it's in season right now, and I'm gonna whip up a really quick dessert, so I'm gonna head inside and show you what I'm gonna do with it. You know, maybe homemakers in generations past were lucky because they weren't constantly being bombarded by social media with advertising and images of people living perfect lives. Don't buy into it because it's designed to make you feel like whatever you have isn't good enough and that you're not good enough. But none of that's real. Better stuff doesn't make you a better person. And you have so much to share because I've seen it in the community here. You have great ideas, smart solutions, sound advice, a kind shoulder. That's what makes people lucky to have you in their lives and that's enough. I think there's some real benefits to some aspects of traditional living and traditional lifestyles and a lot of those things that we can use in our life today and reap the rewards of doing those things. And looking at the old homemaking routines of the past I think are such a valuable way to get a glimpse into what people did in the past just to make their home life run a bit better and work better. So hopefully you enjoyed these tips. Stay well everyone and we'll catch you in the next one.